Two bridges stood near the lower part of Castlebridge town. The first, of weather-stained brick, was immediately at the end of the high street, where a diverging branch from that thoroughfare ran round to the low-lying Durnover lanes, so that the precincts of the bridge formed the merging point of respectability and indigence. The second bridge of stone was further out on the highway, in fact fairly in the meadows, though still within the town boundary. This pair of bridges gravitated all the failures of the town. Right. Those who had failed in business, in love, in sobriety, in crime. Why the unhappy hereabout usually chose the bridges for their medita meditations in preference to a railing, a gate or a stile was not so clear. There was a marked difference of quality between the personages who haunted the near bridge of brick and the personages who haunted the far one of stone. Those of lowest character preferred the former, adjoining the town. They did not mind the glare of the public eye. Oh. The, the miserables who would pause on the remoter bridge were of a politer stamp. They included bankrupts, hypochondriacs, <laughs> persons who were what is called out of a situation. <laughs> From fault or lucklessness, the inefficient of the professional class, shabby genteel men who did not know how to get rid of the weary time between breakfast and dinner, <laughs> and the yet more weary time between dinner and dark. It's so guess which bridge we came to? <laughs> Strangely drawn to this place, I don't know why. <laughs> So we're standing at Gray's Bridge. Yeah, we a, are. A bridge of stone. It's made for us. 